protect the public from dangerous people. But what happens when cops find out there's a pedophile among them? She was scared to death. Found in the deleted section? Um, I can't give you that. I use toys. Here are four times when cops realized their colleague was a pedophile, starting with the case of Detective Robert Strand. On May 25th, 2022, officers were deployed to the arrest of Robert Strand after a tip from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children that he had almost 100 child sexual abuse materials. Sir, can I have you do me a favor? Set your paperwork on the tailgate right there. Go ahead and place your hands behind your back for me. Go ahead and relax your leg. Cops have to deal with all sorts of violent and dangerous criminals every day, but what happens when it's their very own colleague who is the culprit? Here are three moments when cops found out that their colleague is a pedophile. What happens then, you will never believe. This is Officer Ralph Shorty, who was an Oklahoma senator at that time. On the 9th of March, 2019, it was reported to the cops that a man carried a juvenile into a motel room. The cops immediately arrived at the scene and knocked on the door. After several knocks, a guy opened the door. The police officers told him that they just wanted to make sure if he's okay. We've been getting an arrest warrant for you, sworn out today for possession of child pornography. The cops rushed into the room and saved that 17-year-old. They asked Ralph about what he was doing with him, to which Ralph responded as he was hanging out with him, which was suspicious, because how could a 36-year-old randomly hanging out a 17-year-old? A point where officers from another police department would take over the case. Robert had no warning he was getting arrested that day, and so was expected to be anxious about the situation. But what he said next proved that wasn't the case. Yes, sir. Ralph kept denying everything and saying that he can't understand what is happening to him. The police officers had no clue whom they were speaking to. A few days after this incident, the cops held Ralph for investigation, which turned out quite intimidating. Okay, as soon as they're completed the residence with the search warrant, I'll let her know and we'll get that handled for you. Robert knew that if convicted and found guilty of his alleged felony crime, he was likely to spend anywhere from 5 to 20 years in prison. But he somehow remained unfazed by this possibility and worried more about the welfare of his dogs. During his arrest... During the investigation, Ralph said that he met that teenager in his coffee shop where they became friends. They were in contact through phone calls. <laughs> so I'm the... I know there was nothing... Yeah, I don't, I don't deal with the forensics. I'm unaware of how that operates. Right. I mean, I have a very... <laughs> Then police asked him something which left him in shock. They asked him the age of his children, who was five months old. The police showed him a record that they found according to which. And, uh, Is it gonna be this jail here or Santa Fe, do you know? Uh, sir, I don't. Oh, I, I'm, I'm unaware of how, Santa. yeah, I'm unaware how Rio Rancho deals with these types of detentions. I'm, I, I don't know. Okay. Um, but I'm sure, you know, we'll advise them um, of who you are. Okay. And uh, so that'll be taken into consideration, of course. Really wish you guys. The juvenile posted a casual encounter ad on Craigslist when he was 16. 14 ads from the now shuttered personal section of the classifieds website, Craigslist show Shorty sought a boy, offered sex with his wife, and group sex with strangers. Ralph wrote on a platform that he is a 34-year-old professional married guy who's looking for a boy. He further added that he would love to have a boy to play with and take care of a little on the side. SSIs, I am looking for the younger the better, legal, white, or mixed. According to court documents, the boy found in the motel room responded to Shorty in February 2016. Named as John Doe in court documents, prosecutors say the then 16-year-old posted a picture on Craigslist and Shorty's response caught the teen's attention because Shorty wanted the teen to play around with his wife while he watched. ...with a computer-generated preteen male. After minutes of waiting for his transport, Robert became increasingly anxious and began asking questions that had already been answered. I don't know how much he can answer, but... Despite Ralph vehemently denying the accusation, the detective sensed there was more to the story than met the eye. Unfazed by his attempts to conceal the truth, Ralph believed he could outsmart the police. Little did he know, the investigators had an ace up their sleeve, ready to unravel the mystery. They got into a conversation between Ralph and that boy, in which the boy needed some money, and Ralph asked for some sexual favors, and in return, he'll give the boy some money. 
The juvenile then asked Ralph to pick him up secretly, but there was someone who was secretly keeping an eye on him. Department for eight years before his crimes were uncovered. He was placed on administrative leave and charged with five counts of possession of child pornography. After being released on a bond, Robert was barred from having unsupervised internet access and prohibited from going to areas where children aged below 16 could be present. Although Robert's case was distasteful, this next case involved a deputy sheriff who desperately needed a lawyer. Can I ask is this something I might I should have? The female friend of that teenager saw him getting into the car with Ralph which she found fishy, so she called his father, and told him about this matter, which later on involved the cops in it. ...fortunate reality that awaited him. We're actually um, doing an investigation on some allegations that we have to obviously look into. You're a law enforcement yeah. officer, so you know that we look into everything um, equally. After reading him his rights, the detective began questioning Jalen on his personal life to build rapport and make him feel at ease and unthreatened. Um, and I hear your schedule recently changed. How do you feel about oh, the schedule small. change? Yeah. Seven, twelve and a half in a row. Kills you. Seven off is nice, but it flies by. After all this confrontation, the cops asked Ralph to speak the truth and admit his crime. It was also disclosed that Ralph had sex twice with that teenager before the night of the incident as well. Ralph tried to blame the teenager for this whole situation by saying that he ruined his life, but the teenager had no idea about anything. He didn't even know that Ralph was a senator. After 13 days of this incident, Ralph resigned from his post and was sentenced 15 years in prison, which he really deserved. Bulged personal information to the detectives, probably with the thought that they were unimportant to the case with the minor. But he would soon realize that they would become a huge asset later on in the interrogation. I know when it comes to um, Facebook, you connect it to an email address. And then your Instagram account, what, same email? I think so, yeah. Okay. And I know sometimes with Snapchat, they'll have you either sign up with a phone number or an email. I believe it's my phone number. Two. The next case involves a deputy sheriff, Jalen Devon, who was accused of being sexually involved with a minor. The 27-year-old came to the sheriff's jail not knowing what's going to happen next. It's kind of okay. going from there. Um, uh, we did receive um, a picture um, that... Um, you know, when we looked into it, it looks similar to you, so I don't know yeah. if you can take a The detective started asking questions from Jalen. His body language spoke a lot about him. He was nervous. He realized that they knew a lot more than he thought. Well, along with the photo came some additional information about your personal life. Okay. Um, and based on some of the information you shared with me today, it seems to add up. Okay. Um, so is there any reason why the person would See, there you Later, the detective showed Jalen an old picture of him and asked if he had shared it with someone, to which he responded, as he just shared it with his wife or some other girls a long time ago. Jalen kept denying all the allegations, but again, his eyes were down, which was a sign that he was holding back onto something. Um, well, um, we know that you're a baseball player. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people know that. Yeah, so, so that information was kind of shared. Okay. Um, your work schedule. Aylan tried his best to conceal everything, but he couldn't because the officer had every single information about the whole matter. ...of his name, 17 being his baseball jersey number in college, 82 his jersey number in high school, and 11 standing for his graduation year of 2011. On top of that, it was linked to Jalen's email address and phone number. After several questions, Jalen made an attempt and tried to make it a whole different story by saying that he feels like someone is trying to trap him, but he knew that he ain't going to get away with it like that person he had planned on meeting, but that was because the person with the camera wasn't the person he thought he'd meet there, and he was in for something big. I'm here to get some turkey, I'm here to get a turkey and iced tea, some cash, why? Oh, don't, don't, keep your hands while I can see him. Uh, who are you? 20 seconds into the strange interaction, Paul's story had changed from meeting friends to getting iced tea. The man with the camera... She further asked him that his picture just came from a username, J188211 which was linked to him in a way that when he was a football player, his jersey name in college was 17. In high school, it was 82, and the year was 2011. So now, this whole thing started making sense. Put his hands up anyway. Obvious signs that he was nervous and had been caught doing something he wasn't supposed to do. Listen, I'm out here. I don't know what you're right here to do. I'm out here to do nothing. Listen, I'm here to get a turkey hill ice. You hit up one of my decoys already. No, listen, yeah. buddy. At this moment, Jalen realized that he can no longer go away with it now. Jalen asked for a lawyer, but now it was too late for that. 
The case involved four victims between the ages of 12, 14, with prosecutors saying that there were more than 41 victims who couldn't be tracked down to verify their ages. The man with the camera, Musa Harris, had logged into an online dating platform and appeared as a 15-year-old boy only to be messaged by Paul that night to meet up at the store for some type of sexual pleasure. So Jalen was sentenced to 12 years in prison with two misdemeanor charges and 18 felony. In both of these cases, so far, a culprit has never denied so easily, unlike the next case, in which the denial was of another level. We're hoping to find a teenage boy, but instead, he was stared in the face by a predator catcher. Buddy, Paul? No. My name's not Paul. You just say Paul. No. You just say your name Paul. My name's not Paul. You got the wrong guy, buddy. The man had faked his online persona. On the 15th of August, 2020, two men connected through a dating app and decided to meet. Suddenly, a man showed up and asked the guy in the car his name. No game with me. Get your ass out of here. The predator catcher had struck again, but at that time, he didn't know who exactly he had caught. The guy in the car represented himself as Paul and told the guy that he was there to meet some of his friends. But after a few seconds, when the guy with the camera started asking more questions, Paul said that he came here to get a nice tea. Years in prison. Tell me nothing about the lady. She was scared to death. On June 10, 2006, at approximately 12.38. Now this sudden change in the statement clearly portrayed that he was hiding something. After a few while, the guy hurriedly started his car and ran away. The side of the house. Jeffrey was arrested and taken to an interrogation room with the hopes of a sensible explanation. But the detective was left disappointed. Did you meet up with the police officer last night? You're talking about the scene. Yes. When I was walking around by the lake, looking at the lake down there. Again, I drove down there. I couldn't sleep. All right. How's this? The guy who showed up with the camera was Musa Harris. He logged into a dating app as a 15 year old boy and was texted up by Paul to meet at the store for some kind of sexual pleasure. But when Paul came to know that there was no 15 year old boy, but a man staring up at him. That lake is, goes behind those houses. The cop claimed he was in the area at 12.30 a.m. because he was looking for a new place for his mother-in-law and was only making his way back to his parked car when he got arrested. The detective felt Jeff's story was rather outrageous and it wasn't a situation a cop would knowingly put themselves in. Why do you know as being a police officer that that kind of, that kind of thing is not... Paul disassociated himself from the persona he created and quickly left. In reality, that guy was not Paul. His name was Leonard Galley, who was an ex-police officer terminated three years ago before this incident, as he broke the office protocols. Galley was sentenced one to two years in prison and was ordered to undergo sex therapy and was registered as a Tier 3 sex offender.